The road is bad, hardly more than faint tracks in the sand. The trucks travel along the border to Sudan, a highly insecure area populated by roaming military groups. After three hours, we reach Birak, in eastern Chad. Five thousand refugees are living in a temporary camp here. Darfur lies just a few miles away, and these people tell frightening stories of the Sudanese regime's violence against them. Government forces attacked us with vehicles and helicopters and Antonovs and missiles. They killed many of us, and many others fled and got lost. My husband was killed. Janjaweed killed him. Two months ago, Sudanese government troops and Janjaweed militias redoubled attacks against villages in western Darfur. Their homes burnt and what possessions remained stolen. They sought refuge, either inside Darfur or here in eastern Chad. We didn't have anything to eat. We brought nothing with us, just our children. A few days ago, more attacks were launched against villages in Darfur. Earlier this morning, we watched an aerial bombardment. The refugees' constant fear is that they may be attacked again. There is no security here. There is no sign of a let-up in the violence, and more refugees are expected. To make room for the newcomers here in Barak, the people have to move on, but many are reluctant to leave the temporary security they've found here. I think that they have some family members here, and they want to stay close to their hometown uh, in Darfur, because they have also some elderly that are left in their... Uh, in their home, so sometimes they cross the border to go and help uh, the vulnerable that stayed in, uh, in Darfur. So now we are going wherever the white man can take us. We took our children far away to this place because we want to protect them. But also, ordinary Barak villagers suffer, and malnutrition is common. In the shade of a tree, mothers are waiting with their children. Today, the children's weight is checked and food supplements are doled out to the needy. The thousands of refugees here put stress on the environment. They also bring the threat of violence to the previously peaceful Barak. <laughs> We're scared of the refugees because they bring security problems and food shortages. After a brief registration process, the refugees start loading their belongings and some limited food supplies onto the trucks. The refugees try to insulate themselves against the jolting ride as much as possible. Several hours of travel in the dust and the heat await them until they get further into Chad and to safety. The six trucks, with about 100 refugees, reach Mile one of 12 refugee camps in Chad run by the UN refugee organization, UNHCR. Everyone come down from the trucks. The tired children look curiously at what might well be their home for several years to come. Then they climb off the trucks. Last week, more than 5,000 refugees like these entered Chad. In this camp, there are now 18,000 people. In total, there are 230,000 Sudanese refugees in Chad. According to UN figures, a further 300,000 have been killed in the conflict. The refugees receive water. Many of their babies are dehydrated after the travel and start to cry. A short medical examination awaits, and vaccination for, amongst others, against measles. Yeah, they are happy because at least they are away from uh, the border where they had problems, but and now they are arriving in a safe place. I think most of them must be happy. Yeah, if you see their faces, most of them are happy. Mile is a huge camp, 
erected four years ago in the middle of the desert because there is groundwater available here. Most refugees have lived here since, and everything has been built. Sewage systems, schools, storage houses. The refugees build their houses themselves. Food rations are doled out every week. It is difficult to transport all the goods needed for the refugees, especially when roads are so bad. The rainy season, which starts in June, make all roads impassable, and everything has to be brought here before then. Some transportation is done by the refugees themselves. But even here, there are rebel groups and criminals. The UNHCR has had several employees killed and vehicles stolen. The worsening security affects the camp. The refugees are stuck between escalating conflict in Darfur and increasing tensions within Chad. In the middle of March, the first EU troops started operating in the area. But the force numbers only 3,500 men, and their mandate expires in March next year. We uh, truly believe that uh, with the incoming deployment of uh, U-force troops in the region, that could bring some stabilization in the security situation, and this will allow humanitarian staff to continue performing humanitarian activities. So far, have been so difficult and uh, sometimes quite dangerous for humanitarian to carry out uh, normal operation in the camp. A few Chadian government soldiers guard the camp, but they're ill-equipped. The camps are large and many different ethnic groups live here, which leads to significant social unrest. Conflicts break out frequently. Criminals also attack the camps, and it is women who find themselves the worst affected. At the hospital in the neighbouring town Gereda, we visit victims of the unrest. Amina was at home. Her husband had to go back to Darfur when some robbers knocked at her door in the middle of the night. They shoot her again. And the bullet getting from the ham, the left one, getting around the, the breast, the left breast, and um, getting the chest. And we are seeing a wound beyond the, the, the left arm. Amina's relatives wait anxiously, but she'll be all right. The doctor's confident. Unfortunately, um, we still face security problems in the camp and outside the camp. An uh, important percent of them is uh, incident related to gender violence. Uh, that's happened as well that sometimes when refugees go out from the camp, they have been attacked by local population. And there is a very big impact on the environment. The many refugees need water, firewood and other things. Their needs put them in conflict with the local population when resources in the area are already limited. The local population see the refugees receive free food, education and health care and are understandably angry. The Abdullah family arrived on today's truck. Now they try to sort out their belongings. Initially, they will live in tents until they can build their own house. <laughs> Until we get a solution for us in maybe three to ten years, I just don't know. But at least their children will be educated here. If ever they return to Darfur, their future at least will be brighter. There are so many soldiers and trucks and aeroplanes. How can we hope for peace? I don't believe that the situation could be sustainable. On the contrary, we do believe that the best solution for refugees is a return. They should go back to Darfur. But of course, the international community should continue advocating for a definitive solution in Western Darfur.